first of all, in fact, I'd like to thank both Dr. Kocha and Dr. Usha for giving us this opportunity to interview. I don't official interview, just to youngsters in history and talk to them. I don't know if you can talk to them. I don't know if you can talk to them. First, I don't know if you are a doctor. I don't know if you are a doctor. I don't know if you are a doctor. I don't know if you are a How will you describe that? I should say that uh, I was born in 1937 and uh, by 1947 uh, Indian independence. So 10 years of life was like a lover and I prince in Bandhatar Poonatraila. Uh, I mean everything was kind of restricted in Poonatra, so called Kottakyagam. Uh, we had our own school, uh, Kalikota School Ayurveda. After about four grades, then you go to a local boys' high school, which is also uh, a princess branch uh, school, it is called. Uh, because of pollution rules, they were not allowed anybody other than the upper so-called caste were not allowed inside. So we had no clue actually. And I remember by ninth or tenth grade then we go to the regular Sarkar Boys High School. That's the first time we see these people and we are also curious, they are also curious. And I always feel that I had a fantastic conversation every day basically with one of the uh, what we call Thiyas now, you know. And, uh, you know, so basically the so called princess were being introduced to the mainstream, I suppose. So then we go to Maharaja's college where there is again some uh, uh, preference for uh, royal family members. But then after Maharaja's college, uh, I decided to go for medicine and medicine was in Manipal, in Mangalore. Uh, so once uh, that was done, uh, then coming back, uh, we decided to get married. Within a year we got married, and then I was working in the Halapura Medical College for a couple of years. And subsequent to that, all of a sudden, uh, went to US. And I went for postgraduate, and I graduated in, I mean, I became a urologist uh, after about five or six years of training. And by that time, we had kids, you know, both in America. And so we got basically stuck there, in the sense that it is easy to uh, get a visa. Uh, at that point in time, they were needing a lot of uh, special uh, specialists in surgery and other kind of a thing. So, did I think about history until that time? I don't think so. I mean, uh, history was not my cup of tea at that point in time. But later on, uh, in uh, in the U.S., uh, once I uh, uh, got a regular job practice with a group clinic. Uh, all Americans except me. Uh, uh, used to read about various things, especially I got a liking to Indology, which is being, uh, you know, so used to read quite a bit about that every day. And then slowly but surely, uh, a thing happened to her in a group of uh, Rotarians decided to come visit our Rotary Club in America, in Oklahoma. And so we were members of the you know, Rotary Group there. And so this group was coming from Kuchin. And of course we were the hosts and they were the guests. And they spent about two days there and all that. You know, the leader of the group happened to be from Kuchin. 
who was known to me, he was older than me, but uh, was known to me, and would you believe he was addressing or he was just thanking the Rotary group in uh, Oklahoma uh, for inviting them and all that kind of thing. And all of a sudden he saw myself and Rusha sitting in the back. And uh, he stopped and he came and he said, and then he announced everybody, this is my prince. <laughs> and for the first time, <laughs> you know, this was a shock. And, uh, but then of course, you know, so uh, what I'm trying to say is that, uh, uh, I mean, then I kind of felt, well, I need to know more about, uh, I mean, how can he have such respect and, uh, you know, because it's uh, very unusual for anybody to do that, and, you know. So I started getting interested a little bit and then, uh, <clears throat> After some years, I also felt that I need to come back to India, especially my kids are all, you know, graduated and all that. At that point, I thought I want to come and see what I can do here. And uh, believe it or not, I was here in Tusur for about four years, even practiced urology, uh, introduced something called lithotripsy, which is uh, breaking up stones by ultrasound shock and all that kind of thing, but that's all, that's also part of history. Uh, so, uh, at that point in time, I had a lot more time and I got more involved with that. Great. Now, talking about Kochi Royal Family, uh, it can be your own personal judgment. You know. mm. Need not follow the historical or historians of the What is your opinion? I think I can give that question because we've been discussing it, uh, Usha and myself, and uh, we have another friend. Uh, we are discussing, researching, and trying to a perspective which is typically Cochin perspective. The presently the Pirimpadapu Swarupam as such from a perspective of uh, famous uh, Cochin historians like Achuda Menon, A.P. Patnav Menon, Sridhara Menon and others uh, is a different take than people talking about Perimbadapu Sarupam from Calicut based historians or Trivandrum or Travancore based historians because they have very little uh, information so they just do not elaborate on that. So in our own way we've been more and more interested in where it all started what may have happened and that's the kind of a thing. And today or yesterday I read a, an article written by one of my own cousins which uh, I agree with. I mean, I think he has very nicely presented the matter. I'll give you the details of the article so that you can have a copy of that. Uh, but anyway, with that, uh, Rusha, what did, what did you start? From Parayno. Uh, there is this Tiruvanjikulam temple. So they have a uh, souvenir, Ulsava Kalpaka Provisium, say, souvenir for Tiruvanjikulam temple, which I have been searching all morning for and could not locate it. Adile Avi Kerada, Piripatapu Suruva Pinde, Totakam Parayurina, Adudarana Mana, Amrita, Muda Abudana. The thought was that Vandeli, Peripadapu Mana is very near Vandeli physically located. Peripadapu Nambuidi married 
you know, one lady's right next to you, how to coordination and then we have to do it and then we have to But if you start thinking, hey, maybe they started from Parayu, because let's take it away, then, then you have to think differently. And nobody, none of the historians have mentioned this fact. Not even the family is very sure how they could have started. Okay. Uh, women marrying Nambudri. So obviously there was a Kshatriya family that Piripadak Nambudri married. And that lady obviously was a sister of the Piripadak. And they are not Nebuna Pitiya. And how that Pirmanship ended, abdicated as Mekepoyo, Uttamadam Swigiricho, or even murdered, I'm going to clear you deep there. This debut took the name Pirmanak Swigiricho and uh, was coronated at one lady, Chitra Gunga. Uh, so that is how they came to a name. Again, if that sister lived in Parayu, is that why she took Parayu and Bhagavadi along with her, her clan selected with the family of Pandai to the Bhagavadi? Yeah. That's I think it's an area them. which needs further There's research. No proof. There's no proof that they came from exactly Parayu. Okay. Now, Chitrangutam, we know how they came there. Pinyanda and Daya and Chale, Samudri was getting very strong. He had developed Calicut into a major port. A lot of uh, trade happening, you know, doing so well. Somebody suggested to him, your neighbor is Valuadan. Okay, they have the Mahamanga, which is a you know, famous festival, very prestigious festival. Really, you should be the one who should be presiding Mahamanga together. So he came to attack Valuadan. Very part of her decided to help her okay? because Periman was in charge of Mahamanga and he had the whole thing. He could have given it to Periman, he could have given it to Mary River. No, he gave that to Pandana for whatever reason. You know? He was enjoying those things. I think Periman, and I keep pointing my finger at my husband and shooting. Periman. <laughs> sided with Valuana and lost the battle. Okay, totally lost the battle. Then after some time Samudri started coming to Talapuli, which is for Nani, the best site. And uh Pinpadapa felt very, very shaky, standing on shaky ground. So they literally fled from Bandeji. And now here there are two theories. They, they, they could have gone to Parayu or they could have come to Tiruvachika. We personally think that they were, they were rulers. They couldn't abandon the capital, Mahodayapuram, and go and sit in Parayu. So chances are maybe the family scattered, the Tavaris went in different ways, I don't know, but some. Veriparapu Surugam itself came to uh, Tiruvachika. Because they had the main poema of the Divinjikala temple. And the title then uh is the last name. They came to the Rajikula. Um the port, the serious port was a factor. Avade trade in work. Now Calicut had become famous, Avade trade in work. See? And they were sitting there when Samudri's forces came south to the western end. They came south to Turkana Madhila, south of Navadevara. After the Vamapa, they felt they had to leave Mahodevara. Uh, After they went to Kuchin. Why Kuchin? Two reasons. 1340, there was that floods, Kusiris Shalapu. Okay, Kuchin Harbor opened. This territory was already with Perimara, which it did. So it made sense to come to Kuchin. But Samudri followed, beat them in Kuchin even. And they had an internal family struggle between Elayadami and Mutadami. 
So Samarin supported Rotharami, installed him at Chichu as a vassal. The vassal you direct all pepper trade everything to Calicut, you pay a ransom of some kind, and you basically took pledge allegiance and sit there. But that was one cousin, Mutadavi area. The Alayadavi person was still there in Kuchin. He things were so bad, he wasn't even allowed to hide his roof. That's what all the all history books without permission from Sam. It was that bad. He was staying in Kalvati, which is part of which Kalvati there. Kalvati didn't get what Arab I don't know, but he was sitting in Kalvati when the Portuguese came. Of course they came to Calicut first and then they went back second time. Kebral came. Avadim Fajagate, they were really trying to they wanted to trade with Calicut. Calicut Nobody has heard about Puchit. Calicut was the main reason they came all this way from Portugal. Apart the Arabs and you know, they want the they had the monopoly. And they had European connection between Portuguese and Moors uh, and Arabs and all that. Apo it is actually international politics playing out in Malabar. I don't know how much Malabar people knew about it. But the Muslims were not ready to give up their monopoly. These people wanted monopoly. They didn't just want to trade because Samarin was very kind, very friendly, invited them to trade. No, they want monopoly. They want all the pepper. So that's why there was a lot of trouble with killing, everything happened. Then Kebral comes to Kuchin. And Kuchin Raja said, Yeah, we trade. We believe in it. Always we will trade. Very modern times were with the Romans and everybody. Trade was the thing. Yeah. You know, that was where we come now. So then after that, Portuguese said, "We'll help you." Then later on, much later on, they built that Madani Palace for the Cochin Raja. So he, you know, and uh, yeah, well, they all started. Yeah. You know, literally carrying. With them, right? Pina, how they came to the pond, there are two stories or three versions. Um, there was a Guru Suri who had the pond, and Guru Suri for some reason became extinct and merged with the Elayadavi. By the way, Kuchi, uh, merged with the Layadavi before. He, Kuchin, yes. When they came to Cochin, something else happened. Okay. They didn't feel, I, this is my psychological analysis of history, okay. they didn't feel comfortable saying they are very proposal. Because they had lost one baby, they had lost so much territory, they had absolutely lost to Zandu. So they became Raja of Cochin. That was easier for the foreigners also to deal with them. So, so that is brought up the Portra under them. Actually, if you look at the map, Cochin uh, territory extended because they lost the northern parts to Zambia, but it extended southwards. And uh, it, it was all all Naduaris, everybody, you know. And it's a question of who has allegiance to whom. So they all had some allegiance to Kuchin Raja. He consulted them before making major decisions. Like with the Portuguese, it comes up how they, and many of them wouldn't support or would support. Like so, does that explain how the family ended up? In general, yes. In general, like Kuchin is true. You almost overshot. <laughs> okay, so what's the third question? Uh, any advice to the younger generation? How do you see the interest in history? Maybe since you have traveled so much among maybe Europeans or people in US and people in India or Kenya. It's very difficult to say. History, it was easy for me. I can only say what my experience was, right? I mean, for me to travel to uh, Lisbon or uh, Netherlands, uh, Amsterdam, and many times to the British Library and all that. And by that time, I could carry a camera, photograph 
uh, later on videotape. So these are things which you are which you couldn't do in the past. You see, all you have to do is just read the whole thing. I mean, as far as I am concerned, I'll give you a few anecdotes. While I was in Lisbon, uh, Usha was with me, so we uh, wanted to look at some letters written between the Raja of Cochin uh, in 1505 to the uh, King of Portugal, Dom Manuel. And so I, that is my request and there's a friend of mine, a friend of ours who was a, a very familiar with the English and also a, lives in Portugal, knows Portuguese, so uh, he was going to be helping us uh, decide, uh, I mean, you know, the, the, the letters. But then as soon as the first page came and he said, my God, I can't do it. He said, this is old Portuguese. And there are only half a dozen people who read old Portuguese in Portugal right now. <laughs> and so sorry about that. And you know, that's disappointing. And uh, but it turned on the pages. Uh, it's, it's all on computer already. I mean, you know, that's one thing, you know, that it's, they were already digitized 20 years ago. That's when we went there. And then the last page, both of us shot up, got up, and we were able to read Raja Kalpana written in written in Vatelita. I mean, it, it's not, not exactly as you write Raja Kalpana now, but anyway. And then the next page, you could read the signature of the Raja. Unni Rama Koyi. And sign the other one. There are hundreds of letters. What what is in those letters? Whose interest is it anymore? And all that kind of thing. For example, somebody Radhika is interested in finding out uh, something which happened. Is it an interesting uh, story uh, to be told? that uh, she could read through the letters and find out, uh, you know, various other things. I mean... A lot of repeated history would be there. Yes. Might be there. Yeah. Yes, there may be, yeah. The second thing I would say is that uh, uh, in British Library, for example, you have from 1864 onwards, every year there is an annual report. It's about 100, 120 pages, you know, typed, first initially written but then typed and pretty well decipherable, you know, because it's English, no change actually. Uh, so, for example, I was interested in the health care. In 1964, there was already a Magdalene Hospital and modern medicine was being practiced there. Vaccination. 1864. Uh, 1864. 1864. I am sorry. Yeah. Vaccinations were being carried out. You see, and every year they were doing surgery, they were treating patients with various problems and all that kind of thing. If you could get year after year after year, it would be fantastic. Somebody, a young person, uh, who gets a kind of a grant or something like that, a, uh, you know, why did you do this? I mean, they have to be, I mean, they should have interest, but at the same time, they shouldn't, uh, yeah. they should benefit yes. from yes. A, a scholarship or a grant or something like that, uh, so that they can go and spend time as a budding journalist, budding uh, whatever. You know, so that's one suggestion yeah. I would, uh, you know, yeah. just give you. Especially for uh, youngsters. Yeah. The, one more point I'll stop. Uh, myself, and I had a friend from Tripunadra who was a videographer, 
uh, he came to Netherlands and both of us uh, were together and he was willing to videotape everything what I was doing in the sense. You know, so all of a sudden we were in the uh, archives there and the main historian was helping us do that. He spent a lot of time with him. Uh, he had videotaped quite a bit of it. And uh, for the first time, you see the actual name and all that. All these four, for example, Usha mentioned about the different Taveris. For the first time, I saw those Taveris were recorded by the Dutch. And again, I mean, you know, I have photographs of those, you know, we will videotape of that, but what I'm trying to say is that what you can gather this day with the yeah. uh, iPhone and other kind of things uh, is remarkable. We also read through the, I think when I browsed that, you were one of the guests when Prince Charles visited. Uh, that was a, that was my experience. Uh, that is basically, I mean, we know the Jewish community, the white Jewish community in, and particularly Sassoon, who is in Israel, and also, what's her name? Queenie. Queenie. Uh, yeah. A Queenie last name. I mean, we were classmates. And so, I've had contact with them. So, when this was happening, Queenie called and said, hey, are you willing to come and visit the Prince Charles? Well, I said, yeah, certainly would I, you know, uh, even though Diana is not there, I had it. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> that, that's the only reason I think. But we had a very good, uh, I think uh, you talked quite a bit actually. Yes. You know, I mean, there was listening. I mean, that's the only thing. And of course, we have had some Jewish connection because uh, sometime in, nine, in 2002 or 2003, a Jewish friend of mine asked me whether uh, they, were planning to, they were planning to visit uh, India, whether they could see Kuchin Royal family. I had already influenced him a little bit. Uh, uh, about the uh, Jews who were never ever persecuted in only one place in the world. That's Putin and all that kind of thing. So, uh, uh, Professor or Dr. Kenneth Robbins fell for it and then a group came in 2002 and we had a meeting in uh, Kalikota. The, the senior uh, prince was there. You know, so that is one. Then again, they came back in 2015. So there is a little bit of uh, Jewish camaraderie, <laughs> which has been there. Again, not when I was growing up, but later on, when you know, history had. I mean, when I had some interest in history and all that kind of thing. So that's the answer. And I think this point we already discussed that. You have traveled to places like the UK and Portugal, Netherlands, to all these archives. And, yes. Uh, any specific discovery or anything, something which you have seen, which really stuck you, or you know, you know at a point, a specific incident or something which you saw. Uh, I mean, I was always stuck with the organization they had, in the sense how easy the access is and uh, the, you know, what should I say, the convenience of doing all this. I mean, I don't know too much about the uh, Indian scene, uh, but then Usha tells me that she was in the it's archives, Putin archives uh, last week or two weeks back, and you know, it's pretty, pretty good. So, uh, that's one thing. The other thing is that, I mean, you know, it's just, uh, preserving material. And it's very difficult in our climate, unfortunately. It's hot, dusty, and there is very often no air conditioning and all that kind of thing. And we also are such that uh, 
you know, the, you know, we are used to that kind of a, a you know, thing. So, uh, I mean, I can tell you. In in Netherlands, for yeah, example. Yeah, yeah. When uh, and you know, same with Portuguese, more noticeable in Dutch. Uh, when they came to train, they also had this system. Every time a commander leaves, yes. they kept meticulous records about sales. What on you know, that's what they were here for. Plus their interactions with everybody. You know. Meticulous records in old Dutch. And this whole thing is preserved in the arm. I do little out of poetry. You are not even allowed in, inside. Only the professor can go in and fight a couple of things. And uh, what they are doing is they are finding that Dutch students are not interested in learning old Dutch because the only use is to translate all this vast amount because they are trained with Kuchin and you know, all over Batavia and Jakarta and all that, you know, Ceylon, yeah. everywhere. So all these records are there in old Dutch. So they have started a scholarship program. Okay. And when we were there, there was a class of about 14 or 20 students all over the world. Okay. Okay. And they're learning old Dutch and learning to translate it. There was a two from India. One from Bello, okay. one from Kerala. Yeah. yeah both, both, uh, uh, so that is a very good thing. Now, the Dutch government came to yeah, yes. here yeah. and they have asked, they, they have offered yeah. collaboration, send your students there. I had another very interesting anecdote to tell you. I was in British Library looking at uh, some treaty or something like that on the, you know, on the computer, on the screen. And somebody in the back says, <laughs> a white woman, you know, a German woman, standing there, <laughs> and then I got introduced to her and found out that she was the great-granddaughter of a great-granddaughter of a great-granddaughter of I don't know what you, what's the guy, the German guy who translated into Malayalam? Gundat. Gundat. Gundat, that great, great thing. You know, I mean, you know, she was the one, and she's a professor somewhere, and she was in Germany, then somewhere in the UK and all that. I was in contact with her for a few years, but not anymore, you know, stays. And since now we are sitting in Trishur and doing this small conversation, how do you uh, connect Kochi Royal family to Trishur? Did it all start with Chakrandamiran or Adinu Mumbad Dai? You know, Trishur is a very Kochi Royal family. What is the name of Trishur? I suspect uh, Trishur probably got its uh, uh, dominant uh, this thing during the Chakrandamiran time. I do not remember any other Raja uh, except in stories where uh, you know one of the one of the uh, Raja was uh, taken out by the uh, Nambudri herd, uh, you know, with pretending to be you know something like that. But Saknabran probably was the right person. Uh, the only person who developed the Trishu and developed the Syrian Christians. Uh, everybody actually, I mean, especially he was, he, he was an entrepreneur. And also he was at that point that he could control things because nobody was supervising him. The British weren't interested at that point in time. Dutch had left to the uh, Hyderali and Tipu were beaten and all that kind of thing. He was a real sovereign. The only real sovereign probably could he ever had in Sakhmandra. That's my take. <laughs> Nothing more. No, Trishu, uh, the Cochin's, again, when you look at the Cochin state, 
after having lost the northern portions, Trishu and Chelakara, Pailu, uh, and then this Nadu Desh, Chittur and all that, drain away of Kuchin. After I get Kuchin State, I'm not going to so naturally, you know, Trishu uh, would become from gay prominence and everything. Uh, how do you evaluate Chakrandamburan? Uh, maybe it was during challenging times that he wrote. As I said already, yeah. I mean, he was a, a man of destiny, a right time, in the sense, uh, prior to Chakrandamburan, just before Chakrandamburan was born, uh, uh, Savankur came all the way, right? Sorrowed Kuchin, you know. Uh, but prior to that, the Calicut would have swallowed it too. But then, uh, luckily, during the Dutch time, there was one previous Shakta. He's a Raja who, is, uh, who was in 19. 1702, 1702 to 1722. He's even referred as the first disciple in certain documents, actually. So, after that, another 50 years or 60 years, that Shaktan had to be there for Putin to survive. And, uh, you know, it was the right opportune moment. Uh, who is your favorite movie? Both of you can answer. Uh, king or person in the Kochi royal family. Royal family. Yeah, Raja Kumar. Look, I, 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 it need not be king specifically. Any any such person. You have always said Muniram Goel, the guy who made the decision to welcome Kebran. Yes. Sir. You know, he started. Muniram Goel is the ultimate. Uh, uh, what should I say? Sanatana Dharma basis, you know, trade, trust, uh, truth, tranquility. tranquility, all these things, I think. And as soon as that was over, he retired, he became a, and then only the Unirama Kuin too came along. And as far as I'm concerned, he was the guy who was in Kalvati. I mean, I, I, you know, that fascinates me. There is another person who is not Indian. Unfortunately, I cannot tell you that. Can I tell you? <laughs> you can. Yeah? Yes. John Monroe. But anyway, what's your favorite? <laughs> <laughs> you have influenced my thinking. <laughs> yeah, I never true. thought much about him. Did I was only. And. Um, Chakran, 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 May I see it as a change is part yes, of yes, nature. Yes, yeah. History is part of change. And unless you record the history or unless you know the history, you know, you cannot even predict a future. You know. So that's, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it's an ever changing thing. Interest waxes and wanes. Uh, what what is a significant thing which we can learn from history for a better future? Very often it is never repeated again. <laughs> well, I was going to say truth. Yeah. But history the truth or not, it's all perspective. Okay. I can look at Whatever events as they transpire, my prejudice, my bias comes in a leg. Yep. And if I record the history, then yep. it's my perspective. They say history is always uh, another e, hunter and hunted. Look, 
person who won is the hunter. So he writes the story. So until the hunted <laughs> writes history, yeah. we won't get a perspective. But that's what's happening right now. Yeah. We, we were all taught history the way the British yes. saw it, their view. Yeah. Yeah. So then suddenly now there is a Indian way of and that's going to be contentious because it's change. Every time change comes, there's a contention. Nobody wants change. But change is inevitable. So you've seen it being played up yeah. as we speak. Should a road that's named after yeah, yeah. You know, a British person be really changed or not? I'll go through it. I think so. This is the basic. Thanks a lot. Oh, thank you for coming. Thank you.